Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Mishmash Monday. Another hot day, but it's not too bad. We still got them white puffy clouds and it's uh, everything's looking good. But uh, I got a bunch of things to get through today. Again, a true mosh today. So let's get downstairs and get hey, started. First off, uh, I get a lot of people that ask me and have been asking me for years. They say, hey John, what's your EDC? Now for those of you that don't know those uh, letters, it uh, stands for everyday carry, meaning what is it that you carry around every day? A lot of people, uh, that was big years ago on YouTube. Remember, everybody was talking about their EDC and how it was changing. My EDC hasn't changed, I don't think, in since I'm 15 years old. So let's go check out what I carry every okay, so day. I'm sure my EDC is very basic and similar to yours. First of all, I got my wallet. I uh, made this wallet years back, carved it out. It's a uh, Tandy wallet. I, I like this wallet. It's my wallet. And then, of course, you got to have a comb. You know, everybody carries a comb. So I have my comb and a, a handkerchief. You know, you need a handkerchief. I mean, that's imperative. And then a uh, pocket knife. And this used to be my sister's. I restored it years ago. And I always liked this pocket knife, you know. And so I, this is the pocket knife I carry here. I like that one. And, uh, oh, yeah, you know, you got to have a harmonica, right? Who doesn't have a harmonica? You know, every once in a while... Things are getting slow. You pull it out and yeah. So a nice harmonica you need. And uh, let's see what else we. Got. Oh yeah, you gotta have a Duncan, right? Come on, who doesn't have a Duncan Imperial? And that's your everyday carry, of course. And Scoutcraft are red. Uh, what else we have? Well, I gotta carry some change, you know. So I have my uh, my change and my uh, vintage change carrier. Remember these? Yeah, I carry that around. And I got to have a compass, you know, my scout compass, you know, I can't go anywhere without this. You never get lost. And, uh, uh, you know, just in case, you know, you need start a fire, you know, we always have our, our Zippo, you know, who doesn't love a nice Zippo. And then, uh, you know, I have, uh, in case you remember these, <laughs> remember these, you would throw these up. And then when they came down, they would make a, uh, a bang. Then I have my lucky uh, 1881 Morgan that uh, has been with me for a long time. And this is just a, a lucky coin that I keep with me. And that's a beautiful coin, isn't it? Yeah, I keep that with me. And then last but not least, I have my uh, my Duncan top. Here we go. And uh, this one here has seen a lot of action. You can see it's chipped up, but uh, this thing spins for a long time. So, And, of, of course, the string that goes with it. So, uh, that's it. That's basically my everyday carry. Hasn't changed much over the years. Ah, the simplicity of life back then. Wasn't it something when we were younger, you know? And remember the biggest, uh, you know, our biggest problems back then was, you know, asking out a girl or, you know, maybe maybe having to meet somebody for a fight after school. Or, you know, <laughs> there were big problems back then. We look back now and kind of laugh at it. Anyway, uh couple things uh, I want to show you also about... Uh, have you ever seen these flashlights, these generator flashlights? Let's check now, you some You remember out. when those shake lights were all the, the rage years ago? You know, they were all over TV and, you, you know, everybody put one in their car, but those things were horrible. They never worked. They were junk and they were scams, actually. Uh, but here we have actually two of uh, these type of lights. These are called the genera squeeze lights. And this one here is made in Russia, as you could see. And you could, you know, one thing about the Russians, they, they do make a lot of, you know, kind of a heavier duty. You can always tell Russian stuff, right? I mean, this thing is made to last, whereas this is the Chinese version. And you could see here that it's obviously made, uh, you know, a whole different way so let's uh, let me show you how these work and basically what they do is you squeeze down on the trigger here it there's a little cam you could see part of it here that spins a generator and will light uh you can see here i'm going to spin it and you can see the light starting to light up here so the idea is that if you were going somewhere you could have light without batteries and you know they do work but although you don't want to be using this more than five minutes your hand will swell up from the pump but uh these were good i guess to get a candle going or something in an emergency they never needed batteries this one here's the russian version what i like about this is it uses a standard bulb let me show you what they look like in the dark pretty interesting it's always like flashlights i'm going to shut the lights off and we'll see what we could see here this is the led i'm shining it down you see how you got to keep it moving really quick to get any kind of light. You can see the light we have. And here is the Russian model. See it's quite a bit brighter. And uh, you can also see it throws a, a wider beam. So there's the Russian model. And here's the 
<laughs> kind of bounces around the light. Do you know my most viewed video on YouTube is this Lucas oil demonstrator. And let me show you something about it. Okay, you know I love hardware displays and all kinds, any kind of display. And you know, my buddy, uh, Barry, Old Tape 61, he uh, he collects all these, he does things like with all, but mostly tools. And it's hard to find the tool ones. Anyway, this one here, when I was a kid, there used to be an auto parts store and they had one of these in the auto parts store. And I used to go in there, and every time I went in there while you're waiting for your part, I'd have to try to sing out. I thought it was the most ingenious display they had. Now, you've probably seen a video I did on it, but whatever. But um, what it is, is they would fill it up here with, this is a 80% motor oil with 20% stabilizer, which is this. It would come in that little... Uh, container here uh, next to it that you can pick it up and uh and then you could add, obviously add it to your motor oil and it helps it's the motor oil become sticky or whatever but uh people swear by it now i'm not saying anything about the lucas product i'm just saying that, that for years truckers people with five hundred thousand to a million miles on their car swear by this okay however i got this display just because i thought it was the coolest thing so what happens is unfortunately this one, because I got, you know, on eBay or something, the motor oil isn't quite as high up here as the other one. But that doesn't mean anything because even if you fill the motor oil up to here, it doesn't uh, it doesn't have the same properties as when you add this. Now, Let me show you. The idea what behind this display is when you turn this like this, when you spun it, you could see the oil would actually travel all the way up these gears and make it to the top gear. And you could see the string of oil, if you look, especially over there. It's hard not to get in, but you could see the string of oil. It gets very stringy and, and clingy. Whereas if you do the motor oil section here, you could see that a motor oil only makes it up to like the second gear. It doesn't really uh, lubricate the top gear at all. So that's what the idea of this display was. Again, I'm not saying, you know, that the properties between Lucas and Standard Oil or whatever, you know, I'm just saying that this display is uh is so cool and it still works today and i know that a lot of people that saw this it brings back memories that they would always give it a try and i love display as a kid i would go into the hardware store and i i i had to touch everything my father would say don't touch anything but i couldn't help it i was like i i still can't help it to this day i love to touch and 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 play with things in the store, especially a hardware store or something. But back then, they were geniuses. You know, they knew and they they made all these products that you can that were made to sell the product by you touching it and feeling it and saying, "Okay, I'm going to pick this up." They don't do that as much today. Let me show you another one. Now, when I was a kid, we had an old-fashioned hardware store up the street, and uh, you know, I this was in there, and I I, I was every single time I went into that hardware store, I played with this thing. And that's why I had to have my own. Uh, I did a video on this. This is a PC7. It's an epoxy paste. It's very similar to similar to JB Weld, a little bit thicker. Uh, comes in two tubes like this. You remember these old tubes? These were like uh, 35 millimeter film capsules. But you had uh, the hardener and the paste, and you mix it together. And and this stuff works really good. I still use it today. Uh, it also comes in in larger tubs. But here was the display, and uh, this is ingenious. They don't do stuff like this anymore. But What's really cool is somebody took this display and they glued using PC7 everything that's on this bottle. And this is called A Treat. It was an old beverage uh, company that I believe was out here. It was out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, you see? And uh, this, they would take out the soda, obviously, take a bottle and they would fill it with this red liquid or dye or whatever. And then they glued all this stuff on here a golf ball on top using just PC7. This wood over here, PC7, a rubber stopper, again, more wood, a uh, metal, you know, and, and you, I would go in and tr tug on these when I was a kid, trying to rip it off like it was a challenge. Never came off. Stuff is great. Fantastic display. Great salesmanship. I wish they still did stuff like that today. I just think it's ingenious, don't you? Okay, next up. You remember these? These are like almost like a, a can opener. The reason I'm talking about this, you'll see in a minute. Um, what these were years ago, soda and uh, beer and all beverages would come in cans that had tops similar. You know, this is a can obviously of expired <laughs> yams that I have because I don't have any old type cans anyway. But what you would do to drink a soda is uh, you would take one of these can openers. Now, they used to give these away at uh, at beverage places and things like that. And this one here is Ballantine Ale. You can see here. And this one here is... Uh, uh, Canadian Ace beer and ale, 
But these were the real good ones. These you would buy in the supermarket. Uh, this was Vaughn's Tap Boy. And this one here was really superior. Probably the best can opener you could get. But what you would do is um, you would take it like this and it would fit on the lip of the can. Now, you see this little lip that goes around the edge of the can? Well, you would take this. It would fit under the lip and create a leverage point and puncture into the can. Now, you would go all the way down on here, make a, uh, a triangle here. Then you would go 180 degrees and give a short little puncher in there. And uh, uh, the old timers right now are laughing because we haven't done this in years, right? But now that would make a little vent hole and you could drink. It was, it was, you know something, it was beautiful. It was a great design. The problem was that manufacturers realized you can't sell a can really on the street because a lot of people weren't carrying around can openers. So uh, they came out with what was known as the pull tab. You remember these? And uh, these were only around for a few years because they were trying to transition from this to some way that you could uh, open a can and, uh, you know, on your own. So here's an old Pepsi Cola can that I've had in the rafters for a while. Unfortunately, it took a header one time, but it was it's still full. But the funny thing is, there's only about this much liquid. So I don't know, you know, how it's getting out of there. But um, you remember these, right? And, and for, again, the old time is a laughing because these could be a love-hate relationship. Sometimes you would go to grab it and snap it off and you'd be like, oh, now you're sitting there and you would, you know, try and... <laughs> it, it happened. It wasn't a great design, but uh, it worked. It was, again, it was a transitionary. And uh, with these pop tops, they would always wind up getting tossed around. And, and when we were younger, we'd wear these as rings and things like that. But they were making their way into the water and fish were getting killed. So they they had a big, uh, uh, back in 1974, 75, they, they introduced a newer pop top, which I have to tell you, the new pop top has never failed me yet. So it is good like that. But I remember when we were first getting, we didn't like them too much because we were used to this. You know, it was a nice clean. There was no metal on top when you pull that off. But here's, like I said, an old Pepsi can. You can see what it looks like back in, back in the day. And uh, you can see the ingredients and whatnot. But, and then they also have, you know, remember the old Pepsi bottles and things like that? When There's nothing like drinking a soda or, or beverage out of a bottle that has a smooth... You know, when you have a twist off, it, it leaves kind of a, you know, the threads aren't too comfortable. There's nothing, if you've never drank soda out of a, a smooth glass top like this, you don't know what you're missing. But, um... This one here is a product in Mexico, so uh, and it's not that old because it has a UPC, but pretty interesting. The reason I'm talking about this is because about collectibles, things like that. And remember, I mentioned this a little while ago. Well, you might be going through your box, or you might be halfway empty. Uh, save the box, okay? I'm just giving you a heads up, and this is this is the way I think. Take an old Ziploc bag, right? And uh, when you're finished with your pancake batter, put it in the Ziploc and throw it in the back of the closet or somewhere where, you know, where you don't even, you're not going to see it for 20 years. And then one day when your kids or grandkids are looking through, they're going to see this and they're going to see this iconic Aunt Jemima who they're taking off the box and changing it around. That'll be long gone and you could say, hey, I remember. And then your kids will say, what? What was that? Do you mean they put black people in a box or whatever? And then you'll have to explain this whole crazy time that we, we went through. So save the box, throw it in the back of your closet, and forget about it. Now, you might remember Muggy from last year. Well, somehow he had a couple of kittens, and I think the culprit, the mother, is this one right here. And uh, she's not fixed yet. I'm going to get it fixed. But some, somehow or another, this little guy appeared under my porch. I don't know who it belongs to, but it was an abandoned kitten during a thunderstorm uh, about a week ago. I took it in. I've been feeding it, nursing it, and um, it's got coming around. But how can you refuse a face like that? Wow, that was some mosh today, huh? We covered a lot of subjects. Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye. Now, this is how you pigeon-proof a bird feeder.